Matthew, you know Matthew, we make up Matthew already, and we have a couple of others. We'll be right to the next time and stop next thing. Not 
It is recorded, but it does not account for anything. It is still going to go to hell. Even though you give or you, you do how much good things that you do for people over the past, if you don't believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection, it is not going to work for you. The book, the world is going to be open. God probably will remind you of the words that you did and tell you, you know what? This is not going to save you. It's not by work. We are not saved by works. We are saved by hearing the gospel and believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when we are when we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and we believe it, that's it. That's it. Amen. There's no way we can lose that salvation. So that also takes away the factor of us judging people. And saying that this one can't make it, and that one can't make it, and this one can't make it. You know, we can be sure somebody is not going to make it if they deny that Jesus Christ died on the cross was buried and was resurrected. Then it can be absolutely sure. Right? Yeah. But if you're watching something that someone does, an action, and you don't know if that person believes in Christ or not, you're wrong. Because words have to be too many, they want to go heaven or hell. It's unbelief will take a man to hell, right? Amen. When we hear about the gospel, and you believe it, you automatically become what? Baptized into that. Baptized into that death as well, right? Because of faith. Remember, we're talking about the, the action of baptism here. Right? We're talking about the action of baptism. So somebody, you hear the gospel, and you believe the gospel, you become baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. Just as all the other persons were baptized into the cloud because they heard about the cloud, when we hear the gospel, we are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. What shall we say then? Romans 6, 1 to 3. What a force. Shall we continue and sin that grace abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer? How did we die to sin? Because they believe in the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you also become dead to that sin. So we also are baptized into that sin as well. Right? Do you not know that many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus were also baptized into his death? So we become dead to sin. Just wanted to make sure you all remember the whole factor about baptism, right? So now we're gonna go to 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1. And this year we're gonna kind of conclude baptism. I'm gonna read, right? Because this is our teaching session, so we're gonna read, right? Chapter 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sustenance of a brother, to the church of God, which is at current, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, but all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace to you and peace of peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank, God, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which has been given to you by Christ Jesus. And by now, we know that Paul is a man big on grace. He realized that it's only by grace we are saved. We can't even call ourselves believers unless it's by the grace of God. Right? It's because of the grace of God, right? That you are enriched in everything, in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So that you are short and no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you in the end, that you may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a big thing because Jesus Christ has to confirm you in the end. This is not about what we do. It's all about the Jesus Christ. In the end, Jesus Christ alone will be glorified. His name alone will be glorified. There's nobody who is good on the face of this earth who can work. I'm going to tell God I do good for myself and I get myself in heaven. That's not going to work. Right? Who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. How will we be how will we be blameless? Just by believing. Don't feel for a second that you will not do everything right before Christ comes. You are blameless because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Because that blood was shed, you believe in that blood? 
and you are covered with that blood of Jesus Christ, when one looks at you, he doesn't see anything that you do other than the blood of Jesus Christ. So we are righteous. We are righteous because of Jesus Christ, not because of our actions and what we do, or because it is part of your head and smoke or whatever. That has nothing to do with it. All right? Amen. God is faithful by whom you are called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus, that we all speak the same thing and there be no revisions among you. This is the key point in this chapter here. Paul said, listen, I want all of you to be speaking the same thing. No division must be among you and we are just in the churches, right? No division. All of you must speak the same language and the same belief. And this is referring to baptism. We're coming back to baptism here. But what you're telling them is that we don't want no division when it comes to this baptism thing. And it's going to explain a little further. No division. And this is important for us to understand as well. Right? That there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Right? So you say that I, this letter here is to ensure and to appeal to them that they shouldn't have any divisions among them, but everybody should be joined in one, have the same mind, and belong to the same body, basically. Right? He said that no, there must be no divisions among you. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that are con- there, are, there are contentions among you. Support them, let I hear there has some kind of confusion going on between all of them when it comes to this baptism thing. And Paul will describe to them tell them, it shouldn't have no divisions among you. All of you are supposed to be like-minded. Everybody's supposed to be speaking the same kind of thing you're addressing them. He, he confronts some of the issues that he heard among them. So he said, now I say this to each of you. No, sorry, he said, now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? And I ask him, you all no, no, no. So Paul is saying, them, listen. Some of them say, I come from Paul, boy. It come like nowadays, you know. Some of us, we, are, we belong to the church that Pastor Solomon Run, right? By the grace of God, you better get right to run this shit. There are other churches around, right? I came from another church as well, too, originally, right? And what they were doing is comparing the leaders and comparing the church. So some say, Why well, come from Paul? So it's like you going on the other and saying, What should you come from? Huh? Why well, come from Solo? Why you know Solo is a boss, Solo, Solo preaching, Solo thing? And next time I'm saying, No, I come from Pastor Shut, why you leave me a Pastor Shut? So that competition already and to the and you know, and listen, this is concerned here in water baptism, right? So some of them were baptized by different leaders. So it's just some, like, some of us here, I was, I was baptized by Pastor Shepard. Some of you all here were baptized by Pastor Salman Delarissa. So these people having a contention among them saying, I come from this one, you come from that one, and there's a whole confusion going on here. So Paul come and tell them. Yeah. Yeah, right. So Paul tell them, listen, I hear the contention among you. You say this one come from Cephas, the next one saying I come from Paul. What let me explain what going on here. Water baptism, what does water baptism do as well? We we, we cover the third. Places you under what? Under the cover. Under the cover. So we're not um, taking all the fact that the importance of water baptism. Because everybody, now God has a certain order and a certain way how he does things. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he said that some of, some of, some of you are appointed as teachers, some as um, apostles, and different, everybody has their own positions, right? God has a certain order of doing things. Right, so pastors were given, like Pastor Solomon was placed in the position to run this church. All right, there are other pastors who are placed in other positions as well too. If Pastor Solomon baptizes someone, that person comes under the spiritual covering of Pastor Solomon and the rooster. You belong to this body here. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, you, you come under the covering of Pastor Solomon and the rooster. Right, so water baptism places you under the cover. That is extremely important because these men were appointed to baptize. I can go to a parish and say, "Hey, we have baptized before. Come." 
and if somebody down. I am not in a position that's not going to come for anything. I am not in that position to baptize anybody. All right, unless, I don't know if pastor, if there's authority to somebody, then you'll be able to do it. But it still has to come from the head. Yeah. All right? But anybody can just pick up the self and say, I'm going to baptize somebody. It must be any position. As I said, some were appointed as apostles and teachers, and everybody have their place. And if Pastor Solomon baptizes somebody or any other pastor, he immediately becomes a part of that covering. So you, without being baptized, you basically not under any spiritual covering or any body, the church. So we see how important baptism is. Because I believe that the anointing that pastor has will be over the entire church. You get baptized into this body, you automatically become so that at the end of the praise and covers of gold or gold to God on behalf of his body, of his church, we are also included in that as well too. When God bless the church, you are also included in that as well too. And some of you all may ask, you know, like for myself, who are on the pastor, I should be there are certain ways of people that you do things, right? So I was called me into another ministry and I became under the covering of Pastor Solomon and the Rosa by his blessing and the anointing of God or whatever the case is, right? So there are different ways to do things. But what I'm trying to say is that water baptism places of individual or that covering. Which is very important. And it's what Paul was talking about here. But the main thing that we have to understand is that Pastor Solomon or Pastor Ashton Beecher, what Paul is saying here, Paul didn't baptize anybody in his own name. Pastor Solomon didn't say, I baptize you in the name of Solomon, then I will say, I baptize you. Who, 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 who's name he baptized in his so father? Jesus. Right, Jesus Christ, right? So we are all baptized into the body of Christ Jesus. So Paul was trying to tell them, listen, even though you all are being baptized by these individuals, the main thing is that you all belong to the body of Christ. Amen. All right? That you belong to the body of Christ. Yes, you will be on our body at church. You will be under the spiritual covering. But he was saying, the main thing here is that you are baptized into the body of Christ once we are under the same doctrine. And let me say that again, because some churches preach something completely different. Some churches say that you can lose their salvation. Some churches give you a different method to get their salvation. That is wrong doctrine. All right? From the time we get in that step-by-step process, you have to come six months back to some class, and you have to come here, otherwise you're not saved. It doesn't say that in the Bible here. Once you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Once you believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. So if a church is speaking at a different gospel, I am telling you they do not belong to the body of Christ. You understand? Because they cannot believe in, the, in that body or when you, when you look at the gospel partially. I don't know what kind of fast. I hope you all get what I'm saying. Alright? So, let me just repeat what I just said. We are on that spiritual covering when we are getting baptized by these leaders and these um, pastors, right? But the main thing is that we are baptized into the body of Christ. When we are baptized into the body of Christ, we belong to the body of Christ. So, a church from St. Helena, with the same doctrine, our church, another church of Shagona, we all belong to the body of Christ. That's the main thing. And Paul was telling them, why are you talking about this one baptized you, and she was baptized you, and Paul baptized you, and this one baptized you, when we literally should just be looking at the fact that we are baptized into the body of Christ Jesus. Right? It's not, he says Christ divided. Is Christ divided? No, he's not. Christ is not divided. So why is that divisions? Why compare this body of Christ to your other church and Christ is not divided? So that's when Paul was addressing that we all, we automatically become under that spiritual covering of Jesus Christ when we are baptized into Jesus. And we know that there is a spiritual baptism as well too. So once you believe in that death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are in the body of Christ. Because of what we believe in. So I'm just going to read a little further. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollo, so I am of Cephas, and I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Tell oh, Paul that. So let me know. Was Paul crucified for you? 
Well, any pass the crucified friend, they have you and everybody else. You pass the sun, no, get crucified for no relations, right? Or will you baptize in the name of Pastor Solomon? Or Pastor, or Pastor Ashok Bechu, or any other pastor around? No. no. We are baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. And these men are appointed in the position to baptize. They are called to do that. Right? And that we are under the covering of the pastor that is on the hand of us. Right? I thank God that I baptize none of you. You are called to do them. Except Crispus and Gaius. Lest anyone should say that I have baptized in my own name. Suppose he like glad me baptized none of you say I belong to the Son and Tower. He glad because then they're gonna say I baptize in the name of Paul and Paul like if Paul is God, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ who went and they crucified. Paul said glad I baptize none of you. You understand? He said yes, I also baptize no power to us, Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether. I baptize any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And next thing I want to say is that water baptism does not save a man. It places you under, it places you in a body, in a church, and then the spiritual coming as I explained. But water baptism does not save a man who believes in Jesus Christ right now and dies next hour without being baptized, he will still be in heaven. He will still be with Christ. Water baptism is not a requirement. The only requirement is what? Believe in. Believe in Jesus Christ. That's the only, only requirement. You know what? You know what just came to my mind? It's one requirement to make it into heaven and one requirement to make it into heaven. Believe and believe. Save. Same yeah, is that I have it or you don't have it? Right. Is that I believe in the gospel or you don't believe, believe in the gospel? That's it. That's it. If you believe, that's the your destination. If you don't believe, that also will determine your destination. Still does not take a man to heaven. On the least take a man to heaven. If you say that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross, you are unbelieving, you will not make it into heaven because the only one thing that takes it into heaven is belief in the gospel. You understand what I'm saying? Once you believe, you are spiritually baptized immediately. It, it happens immediately. Amen. It doesn't take two days or three days or the Holy Spirit watching and saying, nah, that when you have one and you say you believe in me, go change your clothes and bed and you make it and take your clothes and check them back. Once you believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, in the moment, and listen, people don't say that, you have to say a prayer, right? To be led into salvation. And this is something I did all my life. You know when I tell people about Jesus Christ? You have to say this prayer, but you don't say this prayer in you. But you know why you have right? You just say that prayer and you don't believe in what you pray. And you not see. You see in your hearts? God knows when a man believes in him. When you hear the gospel, and you hear that Jesus Christ died, and I think it is all in, in, in the most correct way, the only way actually, is that it is by the gospel alone you are saved, not by works. Because any but or hand to that gospel, you are outside. Anytime you say you believe but I have still work, you are not saved. You have to hear the gospel and know that it's only the gospel as, as Romans 1 16 says, but that's the power of God on the salvation. That's not the truth with you. And somebody tell you, hey, the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you go serious and they tell you, this is the only thing you have to hear and believe in, and that is the only thing to get into heaven. And you agree with that immediately. You are saved immediately and you are spiritually baptized immediately. The Holy Spirit come and reside on the inside of you. No requirements, no work, no face, no race, no nothing. Nothing has to be determined your salvation but believing entirely in the gospel and believing in that only. So that is spiritual. You become part of the body of Christ immediately. And the water baptism places you into a body, a church, where you can function. I know <coughs> every church 
has the function, have the front parts, and a church has front too. Just as the body of Christ now, the one body, and have the front parts at all function and work hand in hand, right? The church is a body that we are baptized into, and the church also must function as well. It must have a head, it must have a teacher, it must have this one. That is important, that is why it's important for everybody to find their find a role and do something in the church because the body must be functional. We spoke about this morning, everybody coming and playing a part. It's a proper functioning body, as Pastor said, said this morning, right? It's a proper functioning body, right? So we, that's the purpose of you being baptized into our church so you can start serving and really working to get more in. If you do not serve or you just believe, you're just going to be a believer, make it into heaven, absolutely no rewards. You understand? Amen. So we want to work for rewards, not for salvation. Amen. Right? So I just wanted to make sure that you all understand that. So he said, he was he said, God didn't baptize the Lord. Yet. But I too much I can't preach. <laughs> Verse 17, he said, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. gospel. And the clearest definition of the gospel, for those of you who do not know, could be found in Thank you. And I said, once you understand the gospel is in death, the burial, and the resurrection, you find it that in any part of the Bible that you read and read, even in the Old Testament. Right? Any story. Even with, the, with Rahab, even with um, Samson, even with Moses and the Red Sea, you see Christ in it. Right? Because it's always about the salvation. Right? So he said, not, he said, but to preach the gospel, not of wisdom of words, not of bright man coming to preach the gospel, because you're bright and they went to you and they have the very that. He said, let the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. The Holy Spirit is the only person that can give you that understanding of anything that God has to, to bring for us. For, I just want to read this last verse here. For the message of the cross is what? Foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, let me see how much of you, how much of you are being saved by the message of the cross. Amen. What? There's a whole left side here right now. I'm not making sure I see them, man. All we say by the message of the cross. Alright. He said the message of the cross, which is the gospel, right? It's foolishness to a man who's perishing. So when you go on, you go sometimes they go outside and tell somebody, hey, oh Jesus Christ died for you. And he, he was killed and that is the only way we can make it a third world. And a fool who perishing. So the man tell him, what stupidness is telling him about Jesus Christ? Is that not Jesus Christ? I believe in God, but the message of the cross. It's foolishness to those who are perishing. They cannot confess Jesus Christ unless they have the Holy Spirit. And you can't confess that Jesus Christ is Lord unless the Holy Spirit allow you to become a witness. If you can't say that, it's because you don't have the Holy Spirit. And you know what? Don't go get angry with anybody who can't say it. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They cannot say it. The Bible says the message of the cross is foolishness. To them, it don't make sense. Yeah. For a man to come and die on the cross. That makes any sense how any JLD in the Bible back then. I go into Allah. I go into this one. I do it that. Salasia. You name it. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And we talk about perishing, we talk about this physical perishing. That's like small perish. That's small thing. <laughs> you die in the flesh, that is small thing. The real death is when they die without Christ and they go to everlasting fire. Yeah, you understand? So you say, for the message of the cross, the foolishness of those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And you come back and quote basically Romans 1 16, where he said, It is the power of God and the salvation. And this verse here, he said, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And I know we're speaking about baptism here, right? And I just want to go back to tie up to wrap up. Water baptism places you under a covered, right? And gives you opportunity to serve in a body. 
But the main thing is that when we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are baptized. Everybody action is the action of being plunged into. Just as Romans uh, 6, 1 to 4 say, we are baptized into the death. We are, we are literally, we die with Christ because we believe we were baptized into that death, that burial, that resurrection. We are baptized into that. We are actually die. We are actually die on the cross. But because we believe, we also become dead to sin. Amen. All right? Water baptism doesn't save a man and places you under a covering. But the most important thing is that everyone belongs to the body of Christ. It's not the body of any pastor. <laughs> right? It shouldn't have no division among a church. Once the church is preaching the same doctrine, all of us belong to the body of Christ. If a church is speaking something contrary to what this Bible is saying, they are not anybody of Christ. It is as I, I can't say it any nicer. It's the truth. Amen. Right? If you don't believe that what Christ did was sufficient, you are not in the body of Christ. But you can believe in the body of Christ and believe that the body was dead and buried and resurrected for you and you're still working. <laughs> it's because you already believe, right? So you are not baptized into that body. Anybody from the Old Testament who believe, who heard about the clouds, if they kind of doubted the fact that the glory of God rested on and Moses went up and they didn't believe in it, they were not baptized into that cloud. Mm -hmm. If you doubted any of the stories in the Old Testament about God, all the marvelous work that God did, you are not baptized into the marvelous work of God either. Amen. Right? And likewise, if you are baptized and half a body outside the water, yeah, half a baptized. Yeah, baptized. Yeah, all the spring. Fully baptized. Fully submerged. It is the action of being plunged into something entirely. That's why they bury your whole head in the water. Every single part of it. I see them make a woman take off she wake up kind of thing. So, we are baptized. When I say it, pull off that way. Every day I have to get away. And this time, they don't want to So, it's the action of being plunged. You cannot partially believe in the dead and burial and resurrection and say you are baptized in the world. No. It is the action. Being totally plunged and totally believing in the gospel, that is what makes you baptized and, and dead to sin. Amen. If you are halfway baptized, anybody who says that the world for salvation, halfway baptized, which means they baptized at all. Yeah. You understand? So they are not part of the body of Christ. All right, so thank you guys very much. I wasn't really coming up here. No, really. No, I thought she'd have just run the program number. <laughs> so she said, no, up here. But that was the part I ran the program. <laughs> Um, everybody fully understand everything that we're doing this Yes, 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 yes. Right, so if I was to ask you some questions, they'll be able to answer these questions. Yes, I hear the answers. Yes, yes. Amen. So we fully understand the course of understanding baptism. Now that was so important, right? And just for you to get this, that baptism, that immersion into everything that we're talking about here, is what is going to change your life. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. When you fully understand what baptism is, that you are immersed fully into whatever the medium is. Remember, it's not about the medium, but whatever the medium is. Like, it's Christ is the medium. When you fully understand that Christ is the medium that you're baptizing, that's what salvation is about, then you get it. Right? So when we realize that Paul talked to them about being baptized into the cloud and into the sea, all the Jews were baptized into that. You get me? Yes. So that's what he had to address them with. So then now, when things like David killing giants come up, and you believe that, what does happen there? Baptized. You're baptized into that. When something like the Red Sea pass for Israel to cross, and you believe that, what going on there? You're baptized into that. When you hear that, when Egypt, when the Pharaoh and his soldiers went down into the same sea you cross, but the sea come and swallow up the enemies. When you believe that, go on. 
you baptize them. So that's how you baptize. When you hear these stories in the scriptures, when you hear all of these stories, all these amazing works of God that take us in scriptures, then that is how it has to work for you because you become baptized into the marvelous works of God. You understand? Amen. So that's how that has to start to change your life, you know. When you hear that Elisha lay upon a little boy 12 years old and bring him back to life, that, when you hear that, you feel that, what do I mean? Baptized. You're baptized into it. You understand? Yep. You're getting this thing? Yep. Baptism is a serious thing for you to fully understand. So when Paul comes this morning in, in 1 Corinthians and starts to address what he has, he says division and he said, hear that there be some divisions among you because some saying Apollos baptized them, some saying Cephas baptized them, some saying Paul baptized them. He said that's not the way the church is not supposed to be divided because of baptism and who baptized you. Anointing is important, you know. Whoever the head is, that's important, you know. But you have to remember that even the man in charge of the house is of Christ. You all know what I'm saying? So you're not going around the place beating the chest. I from Solo Church, right? And when I tell you we there, because we upsetting things, principalities and powers, and the bad men in the area can't even watch my car when it passes, and my finances turn into something successful, and my house start to finish up, is not Solo Solo, it's of Christ too. Amen. You get me? Amen. But you're under my anointing. You feel where I come from? Say, so don't beat your chest about that. Beat your chest about what Christ is doing for you. Man. You get me? So, God, you know, he says, God says the body of Christ, you know. So it's the body of Christ, which means that the body functions differently and you will find different pastors with different anointings. Right? It's yeah. just that. God find that you so special, he said go to IGGM and receive your message. That's God. That's God. That's the God of Christ. You feel me? So when you tell us that it infect your, 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 your whole environment now, and the healing that it infect your whole environment now, and, 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 and all the upsets that it take place where you are dead, people start to owe you now. Right? Remember, it's Christ. Amen. Who do it? Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Because me, I know God and make up no word for you. It's Christ who telling me what to come and say. When I come and I tell you, it's not my might and it's not my power, but by my spirit, say, Lord, it's Jesus' spirit, not mine. You get me? That's what he baptism all about. So that's where we are to be When I tell you that the other day and you receive it and it hits your burn. Things start to work in your life one time. You get baptized into the marvelous works of God. Because that is what he said. The message was there in Babel. You feel me? So when these stories place there so that we can come now and bring it back to you. To immerse in it. So something will change in your life. Something will change in your atmosphere. The thing that God sent you to complete, you're going to finish it. You understand what I mean? So it's there now for us to come and baptize it, to make you believe it, to make you receive it. You get me? You all understand baptism? Yeah. So, as I say, anointing really is important. That's a factor. But you do the deal in that. You know the determine that it's God and His Spirit who determines where you go and under which covering you fall under for this purpose that the body is going to run efficiently. You all get that? So you will find some ministries will grow differently to others. You will find some ministries you will realize that it will manifest a lot of financial blessing. You will find some ministries that, you know, the whole church blossoming and people realizing that everybody who holds start to look different. Everybody features start to look different. Right? That is what takes place with the body of Christ. But it is the Spirit of God who determines that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when you boast about the pastor, boast about Christ yeah. first, Amen. who do you work to the pastor? Amen. You get it? Yeah. You all understand it? Yeah. And if you think, that you are a believer and you could operate outside the body of Christ. There are no scripture to support that nowhere. You get me? Yep. Find it in the Bible. 
And which I say you don't have to go to no church and you don't need no pastor. Find it. Show me. Right? The Bible says this in Corinthians 12. He said some in the position, first the apostles and he starts to name them. In the book of Ephesians from chapter 4, verses 11, he comes again and he says, Firstly, apostles, teachers, pastors, preachers, evangelists. They are identified in the scripture so that you will know that you have to fall under a spiritual covering. You get it? Yeah. You all understand for this baptism? Mm -hmm. We get it? Yes. So when Jesus said, let me say, if you have faith enough, to say to the mountain, move. The mountain will move and it will end up in the sea. You believe it? Yes. Move the mountain this morning in Jesus' name. Yes. You
to reign now all he has for us in soul. We just ask for your blessing in this place, Father God. We come before you with an open heart just to give you all the honor and glory you deserve. Amen. Just welcome into this presence this morning.
I'm from Church and Vienna Jew. Is there any value of being circumcised? There is great value in every way. First of all, first of all, the Jews have been given the very words of God. So who can brag? No one. Are people saved by obeying the law? Not at all. They are saved because of their faith. We are firmly, we are firmly believe that people are made right with God because of their faith. They are not saved by obeying the law. Is is the God of God of Jews only? He is. Isn't he also God of those who are Jews? Hmm. Yes, hmm. he is. They're God too. There is only one God. When those who are circumcised believe in him, he makes them right with himself. When those who are not circumcised believe in him, he also makes them right with himself. Amen. Increasing us with our God in, in wisdom and knowledge and understanding, for placing favor all around us, blessings, breakthrough, to common turbulence, oh Lord God, everything that, that, that the weak held really in for us, oh Lord God, for common turbulence, oh, for breaking us free from distortions, from evil eyes, Father, from evil tongues, from plans of the enemy, from wickedness. From principalities and powers, oh Lord, that have wicked intentions. Amen. Father, we thank you for putting us and for building that wall of fire around us, so oh, we Lord, Lord, and for accomplishing everything in the name of Jesus, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, say the Lord. You know, we thank you, Lord, Lord, for the testimonies, for the witnesses of all the saints here, oh Lord, Lord, for the bringing them together, for the fellowship. For the blessing of our children, Lord, for our baskets, for providing for us not just sufficient but running over. We thank you, Lord, today. We know the name. But in Jesus' name, and we ask that the process will Lord Lord to be appropriate and applicable as it goes forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, 
Okay, let's, let's, I want to just, all right, you know, I feel like I got to get a hand, see something. I think I need to get one of them shepherd thing. What do you think about it? Yes. They found me, what do you think about it? Yes. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? We just had, we just had a, a board meeting there. You know? <laughs> we just had a board meeting there, right? So that agreed, right? Yeah. All right, so next time I'm going to say, let me move on, let's make a little mic up or something now, so I can yeah. move, right? right? Yeah. The, um, you know the reading that, sister, we are just read right here. It's a very important reading to understand. You know, I'll give God thanks and praise for our participation, you know. Yeah. And for so, starting, just beginning you with this morning. But it, it brings us to a point. What she did there, what she read there brings us to a point. Anybody know what's a point? Not, not this, but a point, a point is a place that we all gotta get to, right? So, Galatians 3, somebody tell me Galatians 3 real quick. Galatians 3, and I'm going to read verse 13, 14, all the way to 18. It's not much, it's just a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to Romans chapter 4, so you can get ready to, to move, you know, Acts Romans the suit. So I'm going to read Galatians first and then I'm going to Romans and then I'm going to give you all a word after explaining something to you. But first I had to take it a point. Amen? Amen. Now I'll tell you something, it doesn't matter whether you miss some things. You know sometimes you miss some things? You know what I mean? Who missed some things? I will tell you something here this morning. You know, we just have some more some words passing in every week. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you miss something. Because I'm going to tell you something here this morning. It's still going to work for you. You hear what I'm I'm going to bring you that point of understanding. Amen. Amen. So we are going to show street. So here our verse 13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth from a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but in man's covenant, yet if it be concerned, no man this and the or add it thereto. Now, to Abraham and his what? Seed. Come, come, say it with me. And his what? Seed. And his seed. To Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said that not to what? Seeds. Seeds. And not to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ Jesus. So even when God spoke to Abraham, God didn't talk to Abraham. 200 years before Christ. He talked to Abraham thousands of years before Christ come. But when he talked to Abraham, he talked to Abraham about a promise and the promise was about Christ Jesus. Yeah. You're here yeah. So then he says, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the Lord, which was 430 years after, it cannot disannul that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But the Lord gave it to Abraham by what? Promise. By promise. So go up to Romans chapter 4. We're going from verse 1 to 8. 
Amen. Amen. And says, what shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found. The next word is out, and that's where it really means. I said, what has he found out? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. righteousness. Now, to him that work, to the person that think that works can do anything, the Bible says to him that works, work can, is the reward not reckoned of grace, grace but of yes. Because when your work is because somebody owes you. So if you work in to get to heaven, it's because you're saying God owing me to bring you out. So he says, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So you could not get righteous by works, you could only get righteous by believing. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord will not impute sin. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. The whole thing about identifying Abraham there and what took place with Abraham and about the promise is that it comes and it brings it back to one point. The point is Jesus Christ. So when we go back to chapter 3, because when we are in chapter 4, you can't get the understanding unless you see what happened in chapter 3. So in chapter 3 now, just flip back, and you're looking at verse 3, and it says this, yeah, 3, 0, it says, seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith, and the uncircumcision through faith, one God that will justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. It really brings you back to one point. The point where the uncircumcision had to be justified and the point where the circumcision had to be justified is one point, you know, Christ Jesus, you know. Now here we want you to understand what's the difference between what they're saying here. The by faith it's about what we have to look forward to. That's about the future. I want you all to fully understand this because people cannot explain this this. By faith, it's about the future. Look back at the beginning of chapter three, verses one and two. Hear what it says. What advantage then had the Jew? Or what profit is the circumcision? Much every way, chiefly, because that unto them will commit the oh God. of God. All right. Understand what we're doing. The circumcision who went to receive it by faith, they had all of the information about Jesus Christ to come. You get it? That's what Paul said when he said, they, chiefly they, had the oracles of God. You get it? So when Paul says it's by faith they're going to receive it, it's because they had to look forward to the future, what was coming, they had the information. You get me? So really what we see here, what Paul talking about in verses, there's two kind of people I know. The people who have something to look forward to, and the people who just get through when something takes place, even without them. 
Yeah, I want to be here once again this morning. Yeah. No matter if you look at me, you're going to not get true yet today. Yeah. So, the people who is true faith, which is us, we didn't rely on anything but what took place on the cross, you know. You don't have to know nothing about what went on before. So, we, we had to deal with what went past. But they had to deal with, they had to be, I'm not looking forward to this point I tell you, I saw a man needing some flour to make some dumplings, so I decided to myself, I said, if I look forward to that man coming, it might be disappointing, I might be seeing it. <laughs> looking forward sometimes is disappointing, you know, when the actual point reaches, you know, when the time reaches. You, know. yes. you agree with me? Sometimes you're looking forward to something, and when it gets there, you're making it up. Or sometimes when it gets there, it's tell way you want it to happen. Eh? Gosh, boy, somebody from the shop will not get shit again today. So it's about two kinds of people who are talking about it. Although you call them uncircumcision and circumcision, it's really two different kinds of people, the Jews and the Gentiles. The circumcised and the uncircumcised, it's two kinds of people. And that's that's all it's split up into, you know. Those who are looking forward and those who get through the greatest past. Because the Gentiles now by faith, they had no information about Christ Jesus to come. But they get you by faith because they believed in what happened before. You get me? So you all receive the promise, the same promise Abraham gave by faith, you know, by the past action. They get you by the future action of Jews, the circumcision, but you get you by the past action. Because they had the information. But even though they had the information, sometimes, as I said, they don't work for you. But you. Remember this one, somebody was saying, is the Holy Ghost, and to the day perish, the preaching on the cross is foolishness. But to you, who had a witness of Christ in you, that day is real talk, you know. Everything that takes place is real talk, so you believe the cross, you believe Christ raised something dead, you believe the Red Sea part, you believe the Red Kill that I had with a stick and a stone. You believe Sam Snelly donkey your boat. Is that no story in the Bible you may believe? Jonah get thrown the boat and the wheel swallow. You believe everything. Everything that was passed. And is that what we did for you today? Amen? Amen. Amen. You get you get what I said? So it's about one point. We all come into everything is about one point. It's about one point. I don't want you to miss the points. You get me? I want to hear you. I don't want you to miss the point. Because everything has happened from that very, very point. The, the Jews, I, I mean, as I said, as you mentioned, the Jews had to take it from where they got the point. And the Gentiles had to take it when the point occurred. People just look forward to some things. And that people who just move forward. Who's the people that move forward? I don't see your hands. You don't know a few people that didn't move forward. To get to where we are in life, you have to first recognize what and where you have passed. You all hear that? I want to hear man. Yep. You have to recognize me personally. If you don't recognize it, you ain't gonna be called nothing else. To get to where you are in life, you have to see where you got to go to. You get me? Yeah. To get to where you are in life, you have to get on the right track. To get to where you are in life, you have to not allow what went on before to be a balloon. What do you hear, man? Yes. You can't let what went on before be a burden to you. Amen. Understand who you are. Amen. Listen to me, good know, because we ain't staying along today. Understand who you are. You see, the point of Christ Jesus. You hear me? Everything that went on before that doesn't matter to you anymore. Amen. Nothing at all that went on before that matters to you anymore. The only thing that working for you right now is the promise that when you have realized the point, 
Not we don't start to go free and change everything in their life and in the atmosphere. You get me a little bit? I want to hear a little bit. Because you can't let what happened before the point in your life, again, personal with you, define who you are. You, get, you understand what I'm telling you? You can't allow what happened before the point define who you are. It doesn't matter if you was a murderer, if you was a thief, if you was the biggest cusper or drunkard. You see, when you get to the point, nothing else must matter. That's why you are the person who can do true faith. Because you, everything you raise from the point in your past. So nothing can affect you going away. Forward. Because we busting some change here today with this point thing. There's some change that I wanna break for you and go here with the hair again. Here we go. You see there's a lot of things that take place before the point to affect your destination. Yeah, I want you to hear what I'm saying? It does affect your destination because all that matters to you is the point. So when you get to it, you know, when you really started from it, what's happening here today? Do then nothing that went before the point? Are you walking inside here today? Affect what we're not going tomorrow. Yeah. Let it loose. Yeah. Let, it, let it loose, you know. You're going to understand how serious this is what I'm telling you today. If you walk in here with a head, you go a back pain. If you come in here with something on your mind, worrying about tomorrow, if you had some stress or somebody said somebody on a job, or you worrying about what people say about you, you see the point when you come in here today and you hear this message, this message all that to Jesus. It must be coming in this person and what it's going on for. You gotta start to forget about all these things. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You see, it's only from this point here right now you will not get through. You believe him? You believe him? Yeah. What is that? What is that? What is that? This is sometimes. You see, the point, the point that we were at sometimes, right? So what kind of thing take place? What kind of thing take place? Some people may have lost jobs. Some people may have run into debt. Some people may have had burdens placed on them by other people. Some people, some doors may have closed. Some people, some relationships may not have worked out for you. I ain't talking just about no boyfriend and girlfriend today. That may be a relationship right now. But if that's the one I rock in your boat today, let it rock your boat. Some people, they, they just didn't work for you. Amen. From a certain point. But the truth about it is, from that point, you really supposed to walk and step into the change, you know? Because you don't really recognize that that's not really working for you, you know? You see, we allow things to kind of condemn us at certain points in our lives. When the truth about it is, if you had lost that job, or if you had ended up in some situation, or if a door closed, or if the relationship had to end, really and truly, that's the point you're really supposed to grow from. That is supposed to lead to a better destination for the couple. I think you're really in one territory. Listen good, listen good. If, if, let's say, let's say something took place in your life that how you absolutely dumb, terrified, distressed, sorrowful in your life, it took place at a certain point. That is the point that you really, really supposed to walk into success and favor him. But you not seeing what God really trying to show you. So you are longing that to keep you down like an anchor when you're supposed to be rising up, you know. Yeah. When you're supposed to be moving forward and because God put up that at that point in time for you to move up. You, you understand what I'm saying? So don't look at nothing that went on there. As anything that had to tie you up in a dice, do you get free from? I wonder if you get one to the end. If the door closed, it closed for a good reason. You know? It really closed for a good reason. Anytime you see something stop, sometimes stop trying to let that dictate your future. It's time for you to really get up and walk. Because you want to really function by yourself. God ain't ready to tie you up with nothing you need and no job. You ain't ready to tie you up with no. With, let, you ain't ready to tie you up with no cap. You ain't ready to get alone. Move on. Amen. You know what I'm telling you? You ain't ready to tie you up. You think you're ready. But you ain't ready at all. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah.
Because we are recognizing that God really did take to this thing that we are here. Not by mind, not by power, not by his spirit. But when something close and in the end, we are like, God telling you, boy, you ain't ready for that. I'm trying to see if you're from some trouble. Yeah. You, you know what I'm telling you? Yeah. Boy, you ain't ready for that. I'm trying to stop you from making a big mistake. Yeah. Girl, you ain't ready for that. Don't even try to beg me, but don't pray about it at all. Yeah. I love it all for you for a purpose. Yeah. You don't make it out. You don't make it out. You, you, you get what I'm telling you? Yeah. Listen, to, listen to this point now. This point relates to everything that was made. Fast. How did you have to receive it? Fast. 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 It relates to everything that went behind you, you know. Amen. Nothing that before you, you know. So it's what behind you, Kelly, what we behind you, the chain weight is going to take us in front of you. Yeah. There's two kind of people the Bible talking about here. One who look forward to something and plenty of them miss it because we sure they miss it. And the ones who get it from the point. But when you get it from that point, nothing, absolutely nothing else matters. And that's when you have to God praise God here. Yeah. We clean up something, man. How did you get money? We clean up something? We clean up something? Let me tell you something. There are people who go through some stuff with other people. And they don't realize that is that is the point where everything really had to work for you. You know that? That's the point that had to work for you. But you're thinking about yourself. You know that you person to on the other end. That's the point that going and work for them. You all understand what I'm telling you? Yeah. Because we're not accepting the fact that God is handing our life, they take in everything. Yeah. So we decide to distress ourselves with our thoughts. We decide to distress ourselves with, with actions. We decide to distress ourselves with sad music and being alone, being in the wrong place. You can imagine you lose your job. You lose your job. You lose your job so that you ain't got money. You, know, you lose your job so that God can get you a better one to get a bigger money. Yeah. But you can't call the whole place. You can't call the whole place. You can't call the point that God changed everything in your life. He flipped wrong everything in your life. You can't call it. You ain't getting you get it. You know what I mean? Or, 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 or you you in a position here right now that you're in a relationship and it just match up breaks. If it match up breaks, that's the point with other stuff. You can change that. Yeah. You can change that. Uh-huh. You can't change that. So that's the point that you want to progress from, you know. You, you get what I'm telling you? Because sometimes too, we ain't recognizing we're not seeing it at all. We not see the letter. We have to be able to recognize the point of change in our lives. You hear what I'm telling you? We just have to be able to recognize the point of change in our lives. But the point of change that God place in your life is the point that you have to progress from. Is the point that you have to become successful from. Is the point that you have to get into the wrong from. So pick yourself up. Dust yourself up. Because the promises are God. As great as you receive. All of us here, the great part I need to it's time to change some things out before. He's just break, he breaking up a hole on everything for you to progress, but you ain't seen it. You ain't seen it. The promises of God is for you. Receive it tonight. Receive the healing. Receive the blessing. Receive the freedom. The loose from whatever situation was causing the anguish. Whatever situation was stressing you out. Amen? Amen. We agree? Amen. We agree? Amen. Yeah. Everybody just give our thanks now. So we are going to let point find us no more, amen? We are going to let the point cause us stress no more, amen? And we are not going to stay by the point that it happened either. Amen? Amen. Like someone on the stable at the point. <laughs> Move forward from the point where the occurrence takes place. You get me into it? Yes. Nothing else matters. Absolutely nothing else matters. Otherwise, we don't be the people who have to look back past Christ, past the cross. If you get to the cross, if you, cross, if you get by the cross, the dice that nothing no matter. 
Nothing no matter. Say nothing no matter. Nothing no matter. Nothing no matter. One of my one. Nothing no matter. No report, no check it, no matter from this point here. Really. That can't say Jesus is. Nothing no matter. No can report, no one can report your matters from this point here. Really. That no matter, no one. Because you've got to the point. No oil, no, listen me, no oil relationship, no matter from this point here today. Really. Because you ain't got to the point of the cross. Let some things go. What are the work for you? Work out for you because you're trusting Christ Jesus. It's not by mind, not by power, but by the Spirit. Yes, the Lord. I want to fire on it. Let's pray for you. It's just about that. Some of us come here today, and some of us come here for the first time. Right? You are that point. Well, you are that point. We carry everything that we in past, everything that you may have held or were holding on to before you come inside this door. Yeah? That outside. Amen. You are that point that change in your life. That is where you are accept here this morning. A point that change. And then those of you who hear all the time, you still know that God changing things in your life. Amen. Making sure that He promises that He promised the Abraham manifested in your life. Every every seed, every promise will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.